Should I go ahead and start for the video? Yep, it's gone. Okay, welcome everybody to the Ohio State Backgammon Championships 22nd year. Thanks to Joe Miller for running this every year, and uh, we got a record turnout, uh, almost 100 players this year. Uh, it is Saturday morning before the tournament is starting. My name is Phil Simborg. I am a full-time backgammon teacher and sometimes player. Not too good a player, but those who can play and those who can teach. So I uh, lecture at many tournaments. I'm one of the founders of the BackgammonLearningCenter.com. We have 10 teachers that teach. Um, we've taught over 400 students. We have uh, probably close to 100 students right now with 10 teachers uh, uh, teaching on the internet all over the world in seven different languages. Uh, and we're adding more all the time. We've got Japanese, Turkish, Spanish, French, Hebrew, uh, Czechoslovakian, uh, and uh, maybe English sometimes, and gibberish we also teach, but uh, we specialize in teaching backgammon, uh, and I'm very pleased to say that backgammon has now become very, very definitely a game of skill. It's been proven uh, now that we have uh, computers that uh, can verify pretty much uh, almost 100% of the time what the right player cube decision is in backgammon, and it's clearly been proven to be a game of skill and experience is also proving it. Players who play better according to the computer are winning more. And uh, the number one player in the world, uh, Mochi, and the number two player in the world, Michi, who Michi is a member of our teaching group, by the way, uh, have the lowest rankings, uh, lowest PR, or the best PR uh, performance rating in the world, and they uh, have very, very high performance in, in winning tournaments. So it's been proven as a game of so I'm going to show you today program called Extreme Gammon, which uh, has been uh, recognized as the best program out there and also plays better than any player in the world. There's nobody that would play for money, for example, and it will win against anybody. Uh, we're going to use that today and we're going to use that in all of our teaching. The goal of today's lecture is to prove that the way you get better at backhand is not just by playing, uh, although playing is important and getting experience. It's through what all of the books will tell you, the way the, the, guy, the uh, road to excellence in anything is with deliberate practice. What deliberate practice means is you don't just play, you go deeper, you examine very closely individual parts of the game and study individual parts and learn it. If you're going to become a great golfer like Tiger Woods, you spend hours just working on your putting and hours just working on your track play and hours just working on your driver at every club specifically by itself and the technique. The same thing is true in backgammon, chess, anything else in backgammon. There are many different parts of the game. Today we're just going to take one part as an example, one situation that comes up about 5% of the time, which is fairly common, that people misplay often, and we're going to learn how to play it well through deliberate practice. There are several ways we can do deliberate practice. We're going to do a couple of ways today, depending on time. Uh, one way that is going to be fun and made it into a competition. Well, you can't have a competition without participants. Today, we're very pleased to have with us two of uh, the, what we call the giants of Batman, the two of the best players in the world, uh, both in the top 20 and have been consistently at that level for quite a, a long time. They both, uh, by the way, are also teachers who are part of the Batman Learning Center and do quite a bit of teaching. And many of their students and my students have gone on to win major tournaments all over the world. We've got John O'Hagan. Uh, the handsome one at the top, and we've got Stick, and I'm not going to compare him uh, by looks because there's no comparison. Uh, Stick and John uh, are going to compete against each other in a, a, a type of competition that I call um, challenge game, where we're going to take uh, the situation and they're going to each take their turns deciding what the right play is, and then they have the right to challenge each other. And they're competing for very high prizes. Uh, the uh, second place, uh, because he comes in second place, is going to get a copy of Backgammon for Losers. Uh, because he's, if he's a loser, he can probably use this book. It's a very new new book that just came out by Simon Hill. I helped uh, with quite a bit of the content, and uh, you'll see my pictures on the back. I helped him with this book. A very, very fine book, and uh, whoever loses it can probably learn something from it. 
and uh, you know, a couple of other little prizes. The winner is going to get uh, some other prizes that I'll name later, but in particular, the Chicago Open is coming up next month, and when you come to Chicago, I'm going to treat you to the uh, one of the very finest restaurants in Chicago, one of the very finest restaurants in the world, and give you a, uh, a certificate for up to $400 uh, uh, expense at the restaurant. I've been there many times. It's a great restaurant, and I'm sure with 400 bucks you'll have all you can eat at White Castle. Uh, <laughs> and, and you'll enjoy it very, very much. So that's what the winner gets. And he also gets a $200 uh, gift certificate to take lessons from me. So uh, there's, there's a lot they're playing for. There's a lot at stake here. Uh, let's keep right down to man camp now. We've got a nice crowd here of uh, very good players, and I'm going to engage you to help me give this lesson because you're going to help me just make it difficult for the participants. Today what we're going to be studying is something that comes up very often. It's what happens when somebody rolls an early double six. It happens very, very often, and people very often misplay it. Whether you're the one that rolled the double six or whether you're the one that uh, is defending it, Knowing how to play from here, knowing how to, uh, the cube action is often quite difficult. So, as you can see, I've got Stick as red. He's playing on the bottom. This is extreme gamut that we're going to use. And his goal is to bring his checkers around the board in this direction and bear his checkers off here. Whoever gets their checkers off here first wins. So that's his basic strategy. Uh, John is blue, and he's going to bring his checkers around this way into his, what we call the inner board, and bear his checkers off into here. So what I've done is I've started out that John got the opening roll of a 4-2, which clearly is right to make your four point. This is four tips away from the edge. Uh, and the, uh, the uh, other player, which is Stick, got uh, a very, very good roll. Probably his best roll was double sixes, uh, because you get to play doubles uh, twice as often in backgammon. And he made both what we call bar points or seven points, which is clearly the correct play. Now it's John's turn, and we're going to play from here, uh, starting with the 4-2. And the way we're going to do this is I'm going to go to action, uh, transcribe. Uh, I've already done this. Transcribe from here. Yeah, I've already done this. We're ready to go. And I can put in any role I want, but I put it in a 4-2 because I think it's an interesting role here. And Stick is going to tell us how he's going to play the 4-2. And then John is going to tell us if he agrees or challenges him, and we'll see if you get two points if you're right or wrong in a challenge. And if Stick makes the wrong play and John fails to challenge him, Stick's going to get an extra bonus point for bluffing him. So at the end, uh, we'll see who's winning. And I'm going to ask the audience to help me decide what role to roll next time that we think would be challenging or interesting. And we'll take a look at, uh, uh, at some other features as we go. Then, depending on the time we have, I'll show you a couple of other ways we can take this kind of position and perfect our game. So Stick, I put you're under the gun right now. You have a 4-2 to play. What is your play? 22 and 9. He plays 22 and 9. So he's playing the back checker. Let me show you how he would play. He would play the back checker 2. And he'd bring this checker down to here. Before I hit the button, the question from John is, do you agree with this play or not? That is correct. You say it's correct. Yes. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. The extreme gammon is going to tell us what the right play is. And by the way, um, I think they're both wrong. So let's find out. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong? You think it's the right play? Okay, let's find out. I'm going to hit the button, and we're going to look at the answer, and we're going to see that they're both right. It's close. And it's close. Yeah. And I would have done this play, and it shows you why they're the participants and why they're giants and I'm not. Now let me go one step further and take it to a higher level. It's still right. I have it rolled out. <laughs> Stick says it's still right. He has it rolled out. What I'm doing is, is I'm doing taking it to a higher level of analysis, which just takes a couple of seconds. This is the highest level of analysis you can get in extreme game. By and the way, you should put 20 and 11 on plus plus two because I think some people would play that. 20 and 11. Okay. I feel like a lot of people would play that. I agree. I would have played the, the second best play, and I would have been wrong by 0.015%, which I'm <clears throat> very happy to say is not a terrible mistake, but I would have gotten it wrong and, uh, by playing that play. And of course, the 20 to 11 is a, is a much bigger error, 0 0.033. Uh, by the way, I want to point out, if you, uh, if you go to www.extremegammon.com, you can download this program. 
and then I uh, will provide you for $25 with a video, one hour video that tells you how to set it up and use it. It will save you a lot of pain. And I'm donating that $25 to the International Collegiate Backgammon uh, Scholarship Fund. So it's a, a donation to a good cause to bring more people into the game, uh, which is a new program that we're starting. So if, if, if you do buy the program, I can also tell you that before you buy the program, why don't you think about joining the United States Backgammon Federation you get a lot of discounts, including a 20% discount on this program and a lot of other discounts and benefits that get tied into the backgammon community uh, by joining uh, the U.S. Backgammon Federation. If you live in other countries, you can still join the U.S. Backgammon Federation, but you should also take a look at your own country's federation. You'll support the game and you'll get much more involved in the game. That's enough commercial. Let's go on with the, with the play. So we've made this play and now uh, we're going to pick up the dice. Oh, we already did that. Uh, and that's the play. And now uh, it is a blues roll, uh, or and there's no points out of this one uh, for the two participants. We'll move along much more quickly. It's blues roll, and of course, before blue rolls, what you should do on every single roll is think about whether or not you have a double. In this situation, we're playing what's called a an unlimited or money game, and uh, John is, has the ability to turn the doubling cube to two. In other words, if they were playing for a dollar or, or they were playing for points, uh, John could say to Stick, I think I'm winning by a bunch and I want to double the stakes like a poker bet. And Stick would have the option of either taking it on two or giving up and losing the one point or the one dollar if they were playing for money. Uh, and uh, if Stick did take the cube on two, he owns it and he can always return the cube to four later on. So that's how the cube works. For, uh, for those of you who are interested, and there's a lot of uh, nuances in giving or taking the cue. So, uh, John, do you think you should double again? Definitely no. Definitely no. Too soon. And the major reason he shouldn't double yet is because he thinks that Stick will take, and he also thinks that Stick will probably take next time. Is that correct? With most of your rolls. Right. He doesn't lose his market. So for more advanced players, losing your market means that if your player, if your opponent is, is likely to drop on the next roll, you probably are making a mistake to roll on because you are giving up the chance to win the two. But if he's probably going to take most of the time anyway, and you don't have many market losers, it's silly to double. Yeah. So there's very few rolls that John can roll here where Stick could drop next time. Probably double five, and he dances, maybe that's a pass. There's not, just, there's not too many. Any other market losers you can see? Double fours, double, double threes. Double four, three. double three? Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and even those might Pointing be takes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Even those might be takes of stick rolls, a double five or double four in response or, or so on. So, right. so John, John is not doubling, and of course, Stick could challenge that if he wanted to. But now, I'm here, I'm, here's where I want some help from the crowd. What do you think would be a very difficult role for John to play? Let's let's challenge it. Yeah, I got a hand here. Let's uh, three two. <laughs> huh? Three two. A three two. Six three. Six three. Three two six three. All right. Let's stick. What would you pick that you think would be a hard role for John to play? It would be challenging. All right, for me, not for John. For me. For you. <laughs> three one. Three one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, three one. I, I would hit. I would hit so fast, make your head spin. Uh, let's go with uh, three two then. Okay, let's give John a three two, and I can I can press a roll, and I can put in a three two for John. And now, John, how would you play three two? That's a tough one. Let's see here. Good choice. You got. You gave him a tough one. You're watching one of the best players in the world taking quite a bit of time. This game cannot be played fast and played well, no matter how good you are. So the audience, don't help them, but think about what you would do. Six. Let me see who's in the audience. You might be able to help him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, the clock is running. It's only one castle. I'll play two men off the 18. Okay, so John's play is two men off the 18, which means he's going to play these two here. He's going to hit and play the this checker. Stick, do you agree or disagree with that play? It depends. If I disagree, do I have to pick the right play to get points? Yes. <laughs> I do? Yes. And if you don't, makes it tougher. and if you don't disagree, and this play is wrong, he's going to get a point on you. 
Oh, so I didn't get a point just for being right. Oh, wow. So what if I disagree and we're both wrong? It's just a wash. If, if you disagree and you're both wrong, it's a wash. I get two points. Then I get, <laughs> I get, I get, I get go to White Castle. So you're not sure, obviously. No, I'm not sure. So By I the way, know. one of the ways that, that I've learned to teach uh, from my mentor and teacher, uh, Perry Gartner, who's also one of our teachers, is after you make a play, give it a degree of difficulty from 1 to 10. How sure are you? And if you're really sure, that's great. Do this over the board when you're playing. If you're not too sure, give it more time. But if you're fairly sure and then you turn out to be wrong, now you know you've got something wrong with your thinking that you need to study it more. So I always give it a degree of sureness. What do you think, Stu? Yeah, one sec. Okay. Nice pick, by the way. Thank you. Pick the tough one. I, I can't argue against it. Okay, he doesn't argue against it. Anybody in the crowd have a, an opinion of whether that's right or wrong or another play? Ross? I'm on the fence with which double hit to do? I would do a double hit. All right, Ross would do a double hit. He would either hit both checkers on the inside board by, by playing a 3-2 off of the five point and hit three and two, or he would have hit the two here and the three here. But he likes a double hit, putting two on the bar. Uh, any other comments or thoughts? I didn't mind the double hit two in the inner board. That was the one I was stuck That's between. What I, think is right. I, don't, I don't like giving up the anchor and double hitting. It's too bloody yeah. and hard to recover from if it goes wrong. Okay. But two in the inner board is what I was stuck on. It's my, right. my let's, other play. Let's pick up the dice. There was no challenge here. And it turns out, according to Extreme Gammon, that the play is wrong because it came up with a color. But the color green tells us it's a mistake. If it was red, it would be a blunder. And what it's telling us is that the right play is to hit and continue, which nobody <laughs> got. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, if you think I need to plus plus, it will take a time. I don't think we do yeah. do here. <laughs> so hitting and continue uh, leaves your opponent with fewer shots uh, from the bar. You are up in the race by quite a bit in this situation because you rolled level six, and it's the best racing play, which brings up another very, very key point in backgammon. Before you make a play, the, one of the most important things you should think about is what is my game plan? And there's only three basic game plans, racing, priming, hitting, and we've added a fourth, anchor games as a type of game plan. And in this situation, you're up in the race, and this is the best racing play. And often that leads to the right play. So uh, here we've seen two of the best players in the world in a room full of people, and nobody pointed out that play. So that shows you backgammon is not an easy game. But that was a great uh, a great up to come up with the three two. All right, so let's continue. Uh, yes. Any scoring on that play? No scoring because they were both wrong. And give them both minus two. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> both minus two. Okay, so now we have run out roll, and I'm just going to help Stick and say he doesn't have a double here. Uh, and now what's a tough roll for Stick? If you were he hit, remember he's on the bar. Double six. double six would be a very tough <laughs> roll, but he's likely to play that too well, so let's not give him double six. Uh, double six is a one out of 36 chance, and uh, and it happens, seems to happen all the time, because we always remember the pain and the bad stuff, but it's, it only happens one out of 36 times. What would be a tough roll for, for a red to play, somebody? Three, four. Three, four. Any other ideas? Six, five. Three, four, six, five. Uh, I think three, four is a little tougher than six, five. But John, you want to help him to help him pick a bad roll? Uh, let's play? see here. I'm not double five. Tell you what, could be interesting. Double aces. Double aces. That I think that's a very interesting one. Let's give John, uh, give John because he's in the game, a chance to uh, to choose. So Stick has got a double ace to play from here. Twenty-two and five. And his play is to come in and make the three point and slot, it's called slotting, putting a loose checker on his five point for the hope of uh, possibly making that point later. Uh, John, do you challenge that play or do you agree? I think I challenge it. You challenge it, John, we make a different play. He's going to make a DMV play. Don't get me on that explanation. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay, I would, uh, let's see, come in, make the five point. John would come one, in and make the five point. And then there's one more and debate in between 24, 23, or 22, 21. Um, Don't pick the wrong one. Yeah, no. You can't challenge his challenge. I know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, 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 he's got one more one to play. You can play doubles as much. 
Do these guys know if they end up with the negative, they're going to buy you that? That <laughs> <laughs> one castle? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, I'm not sure. I have to tell you. Yes, I'd go to 21. Yeah, I was hoping to split. I think 21 is right. Okay, so this is John's play. John's play makes a better inner board in case he gets a shot. Uh, Stig's play makes a safer anchor to keep from getting blitzed and is more of a defensive play. Uh, let's see what's right. First of all, we're going to make Stig's play because that's the play that was selected. And now we're going to pick up the dice and we're going to see a Woo! big red blunder. Wow. Tell them why, John. It's not the before I, before <laughs> I do this, let me just point out, Stig just blundered. But just today it was announced that Stick became a grandmaster, which is one of the best players in the world. He, he has an average uh, PR ranking of 3.09, which puts him in sixth place of the entire world for his uh, skill ability, according to uh, the Backgammon Masters Association. Uh, congratulations, Stick. That's a great year out. Uh, you got me applauded right after. <laughs> yeah, right after <laughs> I wanted to take some of the embarrassment away. But here is one of the, here is what's currently by, by skill level with a tremendous amount of uh, input uh, to get to there. Uh, one of the top six players in the world making up a very, very big blunder. So this game is not an easy game. Let's see what the right play is. The right play is John's play exactly. Uh, and uh, congratulations, John. You win two points, so John's winning two nothing. Hit, hit plus on on the other play. John was taking out the third play down. I just wanted to see how bad it was. It's not that bad. Not that bad. The main the main thing is is that you want to make the five point here uh, to get ready in case you get a shot. You really want to have uh, you really want to cause your problem your opponent problems. Any other comments about why this plays right, Jeff? Yeah, um, something here, here. I learned from my uh, competitor here, <laughs> Stick, is that uh, quite often in backgammon, when you're not sure of a check or play, just ask yourself, what is the DMP play? In other words, which play is the most? Well, excuse me, DMP means double match point. That's the play you would make if games don't matter. You just wins the game the most. That's the, the, the theory that Stick proposed. The stick has been famous for teaching more than just about anybody. So then once you uh, choose which play you think wins the most, then ask yourself which wins the most gamins and which loses the most gamins. And when in doubt, make the play that wins the most because uh, turning a loss into a win is twice as important as turning a single game loss into a gamin loss. So, okay, and that's because <coughs> gamins are only worth half as much as wins. And of course, in a money game with the Jacoby rule, gamins mean nothing yet until the cube is turned. Right. Julius, you had a question or comment? A uh, comment. In my studies with HG, this is a theory, and I don't know what the exact number is, but when you're like more than 20 pips behind after the race, what I see HG doing is making a prime with the idea that when you do get a hit, you can contain the check. And, uh, there's, there's many examples of it. So what's happening, what Julius is saying is, is that because Red is so far down in the race, his best way to win this game is to get a shot and contain that shot by making a good a prime or good points in his inner board. So that's the principle involved here. Very, very good lesson. And then also, uh, in this position, with, uh, after you make the, uh, what turns out to be the right play, Blue has quite a few numbers where he's going to have to leave a direct shot. So having a five point could really pay off. Well, what about the last page? Uh, the question was asked by Dimitri, why the last one do you play up to the uh, 21 point instead of playing from 24 to 23? It's just Lucy gammon wise. Like you don't have an anchor. Well, and I got a better board. Um, yeah, you have a better board either way, but you, you still open up to like sequences where you can get accidentally blown off the board. I mean, the numbers that show you lose more gamins, right? Well, I'd see it's open, open, yeah. that's right, still to put it from the for a better anchor. It might be not usually with an early game double six, you would want to keep an anchor, I think, if you have three guys back. Well, it's not much different, right? Right, it's not a big difference. Jeez? Well, Blue has the two um, blocks that he's trying to safety. So he's trying to safety down to two and three to get to his 13 point. And it kind of duplicates those numbers that also hit with. Very when good point. Up to yeah. the, uh, 
21 point. Uh, Julius's point is that in order to safety these two checkers for blue, uh, he needs twos and threes, and you want to give him twos and threes on this side also, so that unless he rolls both twos and threes or double two and double three, he's not likely to do both things. So duplication is one of the major tactic uh, theories in backgammon that applies uh, applies often. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so we uh, we played the double one, and now. Uh, blue is on roll. John, uh, you are on roll. You're going to double a roll, first of all. I will roll. You'll still roll. And what's a what's a tough roll for blue to play? Let's hear the audience come up with something fun and tough for blue. By the way, let's do something else real quick while you're thinking. There's another feature I want to show you. On the last roll, we thought double one was pretty challenging. What do you think Red's worst roll aside from double six would have been? It's always fun to come up with what would your opponent's worst roll if instead of the double one, what's the really bad roll for red right here? Like Be, besides the six. Six five. Right. Six five. So here's what you can do. You can, six one. Six two. Six one, six two, six five. Everything with a six because you can't come in with a six and you're forced to move the six in an ugly way. We can go to analyze dice distribution and we can see that six six obviously was a risk roll. And guys are very smart. Six one, six two, two one was pretty bad. Double one is actually just a little below average, but it's still pretty bad. It's still not a great roll. So this shows you what your equity gain and loss is from each possible roll that you can have. And it's a very, very excellent one of the many dozens of features in this program that is going to help your game. It's really essential. I don't know of a really good backgammon player in the world that doesn't use extreme gambit. There's a few that are still using GNU or Snowy, which are clearly uh, not quite not as good, not as many features. But they'll, they'll help too. Okay, so John has decided to roll. Does anyone have a tough roll for John to play? If not, Stick is going to make the choice anyway. What's a tough roll? I'm trying to make this challenging. Four one. Four one for red for blue. Four one five one. All right, stick. Pick a pick a roll that you'd like to see John try to play. Not five one. Not five one. He covers it. Covers it. Covers it. Or covers it. Come down. You know, most ones are going to be pretty good. They save to that that block the outfield. Four three. Should we try random? We can do a random roll. No, no. No? Okay. Four three. No, I give him a joker. They want to give him a joker. <laughs> four four. Four four would be interesting. Four two. Four two. Four two is very interesting. I like four two. What do you think, Sid? Give us something sure. you think that might screw up. All right. John, you got a four two to play. Forty two. Okay. Let's see. I think it's only one shot, so I'll make the 15-11, uh, 13-11. Okay, so you're going to uh, make the 11 point. You're going to make the 11 point, and Stick, what do you think? Yeah. Stick likes it. Anybody in the audience disagree? All right, let's pick up the dice. Let's look at it. Clearly right. Very good. Uh, Stick, you're not doubling. I'm going to help you here a little bit. What's a bad roll for Stick here? What's a tough roll for Stick to play? Let's stick it to him, guys. Oh. Four or five? Yeah. Four or five? Four or five, yeah. All right. How is that hard? I don't, I don't, I don't think that's hard. <laughs> I don't think that's hard. <laughs> well, John, you're, you're going to get the pick. What do you think? What would you like Stick to have to play here? Please something. Let me try to find something. Well, let me help you. Analyze, dice <laughs> distribution. Here's his first rolls, or five, two, six, five, and see what's a bad roll for him. That's not necessarily the hardest. Sometimes the good rolls are the hardest, too. But it gives you a little bit of a hint. All right, can we go back to the yeah. diagram again? <coughs> six, About six four. Yeah. I think it's pretty easy. Though. Pretty easy. Um, Double twos might be fun. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's one. Okay. 
Three, two. Three, two. So we're giving Stick, it's a three, two to play. How are you going to play it, Stick? Obviously, I'm going to make the five point after last play, right? He says obviously he's going to make the five point. And he's thinking about my play, which is slotting two <laughs> to make more points. That brought laughter from Johnny, so he's probably wrong. <laughs> volunteer a shot by playing to the 11 for to have more flexibility but he has the danger of being hit he could have played safely uh, or could have played from the back uh, John what do you think the sticks play uh, I think that's correct he thinks it's correct audience okay you're not going to go against two giants on this let's pick up the dice and let's look at it and it is very close let me plus plus these plays I would have never played two down from the two ridiculous it's not ridiculous it's just I've never done yeah. So right Why now, before we do the more deeper analysis, you hit eight, six, eight, five, two down there. Yeah, the six is the eight, one down. Yeah. Because it just didn't make it to the move pillar. Yeah, that's right. That six play was currently in third place, but the differences are very, very small. So we're taking it to a higher, uh, higher court using plus plus. By the way, we can even go further, but I don't want to take the time. We can do what's called a rollout, where the actual computer plays the game to the very end a thousand times or more. It'll yeah, take exactly. about three or four minutes yeah, to do that. Right. Um, let's see what we're, how we're doing now. Six play just went to the top. So the more deeply you evaluate it, the more correct six, six play turns out to be. And of course, John agreed with the play as well. So this also shows you why it's worth taking the time to do a better evaluation. The, the, the lower evaluations are not necessarily as correct. By the way, this might not be correct. If we roll these two top plays out a thousand or more times, it could be that this play would be the best play, but it's close. Grab those last two, or at least the last eight, five, six, eight, four. Four. Six, four. Yeah, it says it's ahead right now, so I would at least plus plus that. Now, now, now 20, and, 20 and 5 is not right. We don't yeah. need to do that. Right. But 5 and 4 was one of the ones I would say. Yeah, you have to compare. Ben, ben just pointed out, by the way, Ben Friesen is doing our screening. He's also a teacher at the Van Gaven Learning Center, and we appreciate his help on this. And uh, uh, yeah. as you can see, the, uh, their plays are correct. Okay, let's move on. We now have Blue's roll. Uh, Blue, are you doubling yet? Or are you? Uh, no, I'm gonna roll. You're gonna roll? And uh, what's a good roll for, uh, a challenging roll for Blue here? Is six, six, good? I guess it is pretty good anyway. Yeah. Four, three might be interesting. Think of the hitting numbers, maybe those are, aren't so easy. Uh, the twos, maybe. Two five, two four, two, two one, two, two three, two one. Any, I don't know. Well, it's going to be your choice, Dick. What okay. would you like to see, John? I, I wanted to vote first. Anyway, right. four five. No, it's not. We're not giving. It. Why does, does someone have a fixation on five four? <laughs> four five. He just plays quietly. He's winning the race. He would just safety the checker. It'd be pretty simple. What's well, a tough play here? Come on. That's part of the fun of the game is coming up with. Uh, I play with a guy who calls my bad numbers every time. He seems to be right almost every time he gets it right. Three, four, four, two. Five, two. It's five, two? A number with yeah, six. I like five, two. What do you think, Six, two. Six, two? Six, two is easy. No. Six, two is too easy. Let, let's go with, uh, let's go with, uh, either three, two or two, one. Three, two or two, one. 2 1 looks pretty easy to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you guys are both hitting? You guys are all hitting without a doubt? 2 <laughs> 1? Which play do you want him to play? Then we'll talk about it. That was a challenge. Want to give him a 3 2? Oh, not if everyone thinks it's that easy. I thought they might think it was harder. <laughs> give him a 3 2 anyway. All right, Let's give him a 3 2. 3 2. John, how are you going to play 3 2? 3 2. 
I will play the non-hitting play. He's not going to hit. Oh, now the whole room's pissed off. Almost everybody would just instantly uh -huh. slap this checker right here. You know why? Because hitting is fun. That's, <laughs> why, that's one of the things we like about backhand. The two things we like are we like anything that makes our opponent grimace. That's number one. Yeah, but that gives. So you're not going to hit your. What are you doing then? No, I'm just over to the eleven. Just quietly not hitting. So you're forsaking the uh, the fun play of hitting. Stick, do you agree or disagree? I don't know, that's why I picked it, the whole room knew. Uh, <laughs> I, I would make this play. You would make this play, you would both not hit. I guarantee you that 90% of the players who play back Evan would hit that checker without thinking. Sean, do you have a comment? I'd still hit it. You'd still hit it. You'd still hit it. You're going to go against the Giants. Yep. Sean, Sean Garber, who's a great, great player on the <laughs> Evan, is going to hit and he's going to tell John and Stick they don't know what they're doing. We're going to find out. Pick up the dice. And they were right, and the hit is a blunder. Wow. That's a very big error. Why is it wrong to hit, Stan, or John? The fourth checker back gives me a chance at another anchor, really. Right. That's a short version. You're already up so much in the race, you don't need another guy back. Right. If Gavin's counted, if you were a Gavin matter. Go, would you hit? No. 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 Uh, Gammons, you get 5% more Gammons. Yeah, it'd be close at Gammons. It's close. Okay. It's 5% more Gammons and 5% more yeah. Gammons. It's close. So only at Gammon Go, only at a store where Gammons were hugely important when you consider hitting here. In most situations, you're helping your opponent by hitting them, is what they're saying. Okay. And uh, it's counterintuitive not to hit. Even the great Sean uh, missed this one, and uh, I certainly might have missed it myself. Uh, it's a good lesson, though. Your game plan here is to race, bring your checkers home safely. Why do you want to your opponent to have two points? Yes. I wonder if the cube was already on John's on, on six side. It doesn't it make a difference, but you can go ahead. The question is if the cube were already turned, just because of Jacoby, would you hit? Because of Jacoby. No, Jacoby, is, what they're saying is Jacoby is not the reason. Jacoby, Jacoby rule, by the way, never the, reason. the Jacoby rule, by the way, says that in, in, a, in a money game or an unlimited game, there, uh, there is no value in winning a gamut until the cube is turned. So it does affect some situations, but according to Stick and John, they say, no, even if the cube is turned here, you're giving up too many games. And the reason is this, gamuts are only worth half as much as wins. So you're not gonna, if you're picking up five gamuts and you're losing the game 5% more, you're, you're giving away two to one odds. In order to hit, you need to win at least 10% gamuts if you're gonna lose the game 5% more in order to make that play, in order to win the game. A gamut, by the way, for those of you who may not know, is a double game. You win twice as much if you can take all your checkers off before your opponent gets a checker off. Okay, good play, guys. Good thinking. It's a very great lesson. Now we have red on roll, and red, you're not doubling. I'm going to help you there again. Red's behind here. So he's going to roll. What's a tough roll for red to play? What would you not, what would you find hard to play here for red stick? But John, you got to pick something well, to stick to play here. Uh, While he's thinking, by the way, remember, long ago, blue rolled double six, and he still has not hit a double. Most people double way too fast after they roll double six. They think, wow, I got this great roll. I'm going to turn the cube. And here, here we all we've seen that it's very, very wrong. Uh, does anybody see any numbers that look difficult for him? I, I really don't see it. Double two? Yeah, I like double two. Okay. Let's, let's give him double twos. All right, Sid, you got a double two to play. 20 and 7. 20, making the opponent's five point, which is called the golden point, when you make your opponent's golden point and slotting the back of the prime. Is that your play? That's his play, John. I agree. John agrees. We'll pick up the dice. We'll look at it. Uh, right. But some, another play is pretty close. Uh, the key is, in all cases, you can see making your opponent's five point. And a lot of people wouldn't do this, by the way. Why would you not do this? You're losing the race, and you're thinking, maybe I should stay back. I'll get more shots from staying back. So why would you give up a, a lower anchor uh, for a higher anchor. What's the reason for that, even though you're way behind in the race, John? Well, uh, blue has those builders aiming at the five point, and uh, also a couple aiming at the four point. Uh -huh. And if he uh, 
stays back on the 22, and I roll a number that makes the four or the five, he's got a really bad game. Okay, so Dan's point is he's putting more pressure uh, on the outside checkers by moving up to here. The fact that these are six away make it's going to be harder for blue to clear this point. At the same time, if he stays back and blue does make the five point or the nine point, uh, red is going to be a, what would I call a, a claustrophobic situation. He's going to feel like he's being hemmed in quite a bit or primed in, and when that happens too bad, he's going to lose the game. So making your opponent's five point is often right, even though you're way behind the race. The other thing that's good about making your opponent's five point is you reduce your gamuts tremendously when you make a high anchor in your opponent's board. And when you reduce the gamuts, you're reducing your risk of losing a double game. Any questions? I presume. Yes, I have a question. Would you still make that five uh, move up if you didn't have uh, the 24 point? If you didn't have the straggler here, would you still make the five point? Let's pretend this checker was someplace else. That's a good point because it, one of the reasons that this checker helps is if he goes behind you, you still have a chance to get a shot when you move up. It's a very good question. And that's a good part of deliberate practice. What you've illustrated now is something that you should do is see how you change the position. I think that's such a great question. Let's find out. Probably not. I'm going to find out. I'm going to hit Control C and duplicate the position exactly. Open another version of Extreme Gamma and put the position in, and we're going to move that checker and find out if you're right. As soon as I open up another version of Extreme Gap. Yeah. There's another issue to move it up to five points. I think you have more contact moving up to the five Because you just going to take the position, you got the three checkers on the 11, you're pressuring, it's also pressuring the mid, the six. such a bad position. A little computer glitch here. It's running a little slower because I'm streaming. Oh, yeah. But this is what I do a lot. Uh, I open another version. Uh, now I hit Control V. It puts the exact same position in. And now I can take that checker off of here. And let's put it uh, over here. And the question is would you still make the five point now that you don't have this checker back here? And the answer. My guess is yes. I'm guessing not. But and I'm Stick is guessing it. not. And Stick is right. And I'm wrong by a lot. Very, very good point. Yeah, no, plus it's plus not plus. in the list yet. Plus, plus. Yeah, it's down, the, it's down in the, uh, not the. No, it wasn't. That wasn't making the anchor. That was not making the anchor. Not even making. Not even making. Show, all, just, uh, show all moves. And let's see where making the anchor is. Okay, let's go to the next one. Quit <laughs> 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 wrong. Thanks for asking that question. You absolutely don't. That straggler is the key. That gives you the, if he goes behind, it's a great question. And again, this is deliberate practice by moving checkers around and seeing how they play. Now let's go back to the first version of the screen gamut. Let's get, let's get close this one. Uh, I'll leave it up for in case we want to do it again. Okay. So now we have blue on roll, and blue, are you thinking about doubling or? Uh, I would think about it, however, needing to clear the mid and the 11, plus he's got the guy back on the 24, I think it's still no doubt. Uh, and if the guy wasn't on the 24, and you have 27 pips, you might be doubling that. Yeah. So the, the straggler turns out to be a very key point. Thanks for bringing that up. So he's not doubling. Do you, do you want to challenge that stick? Do you disagree? No. You agree. So now what's a tough roll? for blue to play. Six three. Six one. Double ones. Double ones. Double ones. Double ones isn't that tough. Yeah. Maybe four three. Four three six three. Five two. Uh, Why can't you play the better? That's not hard. All right, stay come up with what do you think what would you like to see John have to decide on? Five four. Five four. <laughs> now the 5-4 might work as a tough yeah, play. Yeah. What's a tough play for Jeff? 4-3, too easy? Or too good? Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Right. Let's do 4-3. Three. 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 John, how do you play 4-3? Three. Three. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 
you lose a point for admitting that. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, what, does, what does he lose if he says he knows and he doesn't? <laughs> There's a little bit of poker in back end, but that, 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 that's why you play poker. See, he probably knows for sure he's going to get challenged. That's why he's pretending he doesn't know. Very devious guy. He's from Indiana. All right, I'll play uh, seven and three. You're going to play to the seven point and, then six and to the three point. Stick, what do you think? I was hoping to make another play. Uh, <laughs> like uh, eight to one? Is that the play? Yeah, so that's what I was hoping. Yeah. Ben was saying he might play eight to one. I don't mind it, but I understand yeah. why, uh, why John didn't get eight to one. Yeah, I'm good with that. You're good with this. I'll let you be 11. Okay, so somebody suggested two off the 11, which is this. Too many shots. It's leaving the red six. Somebody likes to hit them? Hitting is possible. I don't think it's. One of the advantages of hitting him is if he doesn't hit you back, you get him off the east point and get him out of your hair a little bit. Yeah. But if you get hit now, it's not real pretty to be behind this. So that's as plus as minus. Every single decision you make in backgammon, you're weighing risk and reward. And there's a risk and reward to every play. And this has some great rewards and some great risks. That might be right. I'm still stuck. Stick might be right. I mean, these are the two plays I was stuck on. Ben likes John's play. Now, this leaves the the fewer shots other than hitting, this only gets hit with a two or a double one. That's 12 times out of 36. And if he doesn't get hit, I'm going to change. I'm going to hit this way. You're going to sure. challenge and you say yeah, hitting? Sure. OK. So let's pick up the dice. We do have a challenge here. And ooh, maybe we have a, oh, maybe we may have a, and hitting. Oh, no, well, no, this is too That's strong. I'm having problems. I'm going to plus plus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. What it shows is that the hitting play is better, but by two one hundredths of a, of, a, of a percent, which is very, very tiny. It's funny because I think not hitting is actually the harder play to make. <laughs> so let's see what plus plus says. We're only halfway done. Either way, there's no there's no uh, uh, points unless the difference is point oh two, and we're not even close to that. We're point oh oh three. So this is a tie. Uh, either play was fine. Okay. Okay. But we see the logic behind yeah, you. But Mike, you have a question? Those were the two plays I was thinking about as well. But I'm curious, when one person suggested move them both off the 11, Stick, I think, said too many shots. And I just, philosophically, can you speak to why you wouldn't bait them by bra uh, breaking the 20 point? I mean, 6-4 seems to be the only disaster. But even then, you have returns in the 7-8. And with a two up the mid. Six, 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 one. They all look good to me. Any six, I'm six, so one. happy about. I don't care. It's not baiting him when he has no board. Like, what if he hits me back from the bar? It doesn't matter at all. I have a board. He has no board. I'm hitting blindly with every six without any thought. Right. Right. There is a so happy. There is a major concept involved here also. You don't want to get into a hitting exchange when your opponent has a better inner board when you're outboarded. Blue has one interboard point, red has three, so that says that blue shoots tend to avoid contact, tend to avoid getting into hitting, uh, and his, it, it isn't consistent with his game plan to get hit here. He wants to play more of a racing game, and there's more shots here. This probably doesn't clean up that easy. Right? No, it doesn't. Yeah, this probably doesn't. Well, the other one had 12 three, shots. Sorry. The other one had 12 shots. This is 11, 6 is plus 4, 2, plus uh, 5, 1. Is uh, 15 shots. And again, next turn it's hard to clean up. So it's four more shots. Yeah. And four more shots, each shot is worth about 2.778%. So you're talking about, uh, about, yeah, 9%. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we have a red on roll and red. Uh, are you doubling now, Stick? No. You're not doubling, you're going to roll. And what's the tough roll for, for a Stick to play here? Let's get a little help from the audience. Let's give a stick a, a tough roll to play. Yeah, not that hard. 
let's just give them a bad roll. Let's see what a bad roll. I can't do. I can't do analyze that right. I'll raise this. How about a six five for red? I would. I wouldn't be totally sure how to play a six five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Six five. Obviously thirteen seven. Thirteen seven and I, his next choices are obviously to slot the three point or possibly make this point, not be that worried about leaving a shot. I'll just slot the three. He's gonna slot the three. I couldn't talk to you in the other play. Yeah. Okay. John, what do you think? I think that's right. John thinks it's right. Any comments, questions? Anybody would make the other play? A couple people think they might. Yeah, let's look. And uh, look, there's a very close play of just making it. Just making the two point, and this play is bad, and this play is not too good. So they did get the right play. Let's move on. Blue, you're on roll here. Cube action. Uh, let's see, 23 hips ahead. It's <coughs> First thing John said is, oh, I'm 23 hips ahead. I always, I always need to know the pimp count, even if it's not a pure race. Very critical. I think I'll still hold off. He's going to hold off. Anybody disagree? He should double. Stick, you challenge him. He no. should double. Okay, he's not doubling. He's rolling. And by the way, we know it's right, or else there would have been a, a little thing that comes up says he made an error, so he was right back to double. What's a tough roll? Julius says anything with a one. But they all play okay. They all play okay? Yeah, except for one one, but they all play uh -huh. okay. Six something. Six. But not two. Six five might be tough, but uh, not that hard to play, I think. All right, Stick, what would you like to see John have to play here? Five two? No, not five two. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say not five two? You think it's obvious? Making the ace. Making the ace. Get him off out of your there. Six four. Six four. Ben, is six four looks like it'd be kind of tough to play. Well, let's go with six. Let's go with six four. Ben came up with a good idea here. All right, John, you have a six four play. All right. Let's see. Thirteen to three. The deuce point, 13 to 3 or 8 to deuce. Eight, two, seven, and by the way, one of the nice things is you can look at each play and then I can right click on my mouse and take it back. Alright, I'll just clear the mid. 13 to 3. Clear the mid. 13 to 3. That's just the clear, but probably the clearing would be both the mid. Yeah. So he's going to make the point and leave a volunteer A shot here. Um, and what do you think, Stick? Can you set up uh, the other play? Um, Which other play? Making the two. Making the two? They both leave 11 numbers of hit, although the other one does leave the indirect ace. So he's more than 11 because of the, it also leaves. That's this. the only thing the other play has going for it, but it's a lot. Uh -huh. Three numbers. This one just doesn't hang up that easy. And John's play makes a better point. You'd rather make the three than the two. I'm not trying to talk in anything. Yeah. I think I'm making John's play just because of the cleanup. Okay, they both agree on John's play. Anything from the audience? Any, yeah. any disagree? Okay, let's pick up the dice. It's hard to disagree with two, two of the greatest players in the world, and it's right by a mile. Not even close. It would be a major, what we call a double blunder to make the two point. Easier to clean up, and even though you're leaving a few more shots, because in addition to the 11 ones, you're leaving a double four and a five three uh, to hit. So a few more shots, but fairly the right play. You want to clear the back point and bring your checkers home. Okay, red's not doubling, and what's the tough roll for red here?
All the ones are fairly easy. Red would have to hit, I would think. I don't know what to do with the five. You wouldn't know what to do with the five. Probably just five two. Five one. Five, 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 five one. You wouldn't know what to do. Oh, the hits out. Five. Oh, yeah. Really? If it's off the back, we would have shot. So what's a tough? What's what's a horrible roll here? Double six, I guess. Yeah. Easy to play. T T just walked in. He knows how to call bad rolls. What what role would you would you think would be tough to play or very tough for right here? Not tough to play, but a bad roll would be double six. would be a very bad roll for red, yes. It'd strip him quite a bit. Six five. Hey, I, I like six five. Six five? All right, John would like to see Stick play a six five. I don't think six six is as bad as everyone thinks it is. Uh -huh. Good job on the right. Just you don't think 6-6 six, six is that bad? Let's find out. I mean, Analyze dice distribution. Let's see if DT was right. right. Yeah, you're right. 6-6 six, six is, uh, right. is actually far from the worst roll. His worst roll being one of these. They're all pretty equally bad. Uh, and John did pick a pretty bad one, a tough one. Okay, 6-5 for um, for what? What are you doing, Stig? I'm just making the ace point. Making the ace point. John, do you agree or disagree? Uh, <laughs> sure, I think that's right. But I'm yeah, it's going. usually ugly to make the ace point. We were taught years and years ago, you never make that ace point. A few players like Jim Tasco and others were making it and uh, winning quite a bit. It's not always so wrong. Uh, does anybody, anybody from the audience disagree with this point? Let's see what's right. Ah, it's wrong, man. Ah, it's it's a very, very, <laughs> no, it turned out to be right with a plus. Oh, well, and I forgot to ask if you did. You didn't challenge. That's right, you didn't challenge. So we're going to go with making the ace point. And uh, he's waiting, staying back, waiting for a shot. Uh, point is a point. If you hit him, it helps to have a point, man. Okay, uh, John, are you thinking about doubling again? Yes. Well, you double. are? Double. You do double. Yes. And uh, uh, Stick, do you agree or disagree? And then we need to know if you take the pass. Yeah, I'm definitely taking. He's definitely taking. And John can challenge that after we see if, first of all, you agree with the double. Uh, no, I agree with you. You agree with the double? Yeah. And John, do you agree with his take? Uh, yes, I do. So they both think it's a double take. Audience, do you agree? <coughs> Anybody got a different thought? So we're going to double. double. And we're going to take. And first of all, we, can, we can't look at it just yet because this is up, but it looks like it was slightly wrong in one of those areas. No, this doesn't say it's wrong. The wrong box would be here. Yeah, yeah. So this shows it was correct, probably, to double into take. Yeah. So just because you're losing doesn't mean you quit, because his take point, as long as he can win more than about one out of four games, he's probably right to take in this situation, depending on how often he might get gammon. And you don't get gammon that much holding the five point. Okay, so. What's a, a tough role for Blue to play here, Stan, or anybody? 6-5 might be interesting. Anybody have a, a tough role for Blue to play? Double fours. Double fours? Uh, Pure choice, Stan. What would you like to see John have to decide? What about double ones? Double ones? That's interesting. Oh, wow. All right, let's do it. This is one of the ways to test how mean people are. <laughs> and we're finding out how they're both very mean guys. Okay, so, uh, John, you got another one to play from here. And the White Castle hamburgers are on the line. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Well, let's see here. Um, I think I just make the ace point. Okay, so John is making the ace point. What other plays are you thinking about, John? Uh, you can make the nine point. Making the nine point, moving to here, having a more solid anchor and getting rid of and having to clear these later. Yeah. The ace point getting the checker out of the way. Yeah, yeah, making the ace point, uh, hopefully he'll enter high and not hit. Okay, this is John's play. Stick, do you agree or disagree? Yeah, it's my play. He likes it. Anybody disagree? 11-9. 11 nine. Okay, you like making the nine? A couple people like making the nine point? I like the ace point. You like the ace point? Yeah. Let's see what's right. Both of the Giants are going for the ace point. Way too many shots to make the nine. Oh, it's close. And, and actually, nine is a little better. Let's plus plus it. Who said make the nine? That was you and VT and. 
By the way, DT, you're in the semifinals of the Masters, and you're going to be playing stick, right? By accident. By accident, yeah, because you beat me in the first round by Gavin and me no, twice in a row. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner plays uh, uh, Dion Hogan in the finals of the Masters. Congratulations, guys, for getting that part in a very tough meal. Well, right. this would have been a winning challenge. It's over 2%, and the uh, okay. state maybe you should forfeit your match to DT. He got to swim right. Yeah. He's going to get Probably just want to show up for yeah. the match. Yeah. Very good, guys. It's a two to one hedge now. So, why is this play better? Let's look at it. Uh, here's, here's what it looks like. You, you do get rid of the problem of clearing. The 11 point, which is a toughie, it's easier to bring him home. And you're leaving a shot now out here while he's got a lot on his board. Yeah. But it's close. It's not, this is not a terrible mistake to make a point oh two two here. Uh, and let's look at the cube. Uh, the cube was very barely a double. That's what this shows. In fact, it's plus plus this. It's a huge take, and the double is just right on the edge. Point oh oh six is like, is like flipping a coin as far as whether you should double or not. But both players agree. Well, now it's .002. It's right on the edge. And when you're right on the edge, it's often right to double because you might get lucky and get a pass. I guarantee you, there's a lot of people that would pass this cube. Not a giant, but a lot of a lot of us who aren't giants might pass this cube. Okay, uh, it's uh, you're certainly not going to redouble now. Uh, Stick is holding a two cube and has the right to give it back on four, but he would only wait until he's winning, of course, to do that. So he rolls. And what, John, what would you like to see, other than rolling a double six or double one, what would you like to see Stick have to play here? Does he hit with a three one or four one? Is, that a, is there any question of any of those kind of plays? No question. No question. Okay. He's hitting for sure. So that's not a hard one to play. Five six is ugly. Five six is ugly, but it's not hard to play, is it? It is? It's a bit. It's not hard to play. Okay. Some of us say it's not hard to play a 5 6. We'll see. We'll talk about how to play that in one second. I come in with the 5. I think that's obvious. 4 6. I don't think 3 6 or 4 6. 3 6, 4 6? 4 6? Oh, you have an option. Yeah. Whatever. What do you think, John? What would you like to see uh, Stick have to play? 2 6. All right, well, let's go with 4-6. Uh, 4-6. Stick, how do you play a 4-6? You're going to come in with the four. It's forced. When you have a part of your play that's forced, always do that first and then look around. Now he's got a 6 to play. He's got several options. He can come out with either this checker or he can come out with one of these or go to the ace. He only has three options. Uh, two options. I'm just coming out. He's coming out. John, what do you think? Uh, I guess that's right. John agrees. Anybody in the audience disagree? Uh, keep it there. Keep it there? Yeah, I'd keep it there. You would keep it there and do what? Come down. Come down. So you leave him a one shot, come down, make a little bit better board, not worry so much about getting hit. Okay, so we've got another a second opinion. Let's see what the boss says. Extreme Gavin says. Oh, you're gonna put in a roll. You can just change it after. Put in a roll. Put in anything? Yeah, yeah. And you'll be able to tap in your roll. Okay. So let's look at the six four. And yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. Going to the ace point. Coming down. Going to the ace point is very bad. Throwing a checker out of play. But the coming down play is very very close. Congratulations for seeing that. Uh, let's plus plus it. <laughs> did you know that coming down was with the MVP? Yes, I did. Absolutely. Again, that pointed out that the DMP of Gamma's yeah. didn't matter, coming down would be right. If you don't care about getting Gamma, you're going to keep a better position. So the play was right, but not by a lot. Yeah. Okay, so now we have. Uh, oh, you're saying I can change this? Yeah, you, you just type, type in, in anything, it'll change the roll now. Yeah. Type in 3 1. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's give uh, Blue a tough roll to play here. What would you like to see? Stick play, John. Well, actually, it's my roll. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, stick. Uh, stick gets to pick a tough roll. Anybody pick a tough roll for John to play? I'm sure there's going to be one. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be one. <coughs> Let's see. 4-2. Four 4-2 two. Four two is a suggestion. 
I think you double ones. Double ones. Double ones. No. It's too easy to play. It's not a good roll. Three one. Three one's interesting. Three two. Three two is pretty simple. The problem is there needs to be a .02 difference for me to be yeah. to win, so I can't pick like six two because I think the difference might be too small to even win. Well, just pick Let's a go three one. Three, three one. one or three one. Okay. Three one. Three one. All right, John, you got a three one to play. Really? He's gonna hit with the three. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt that he hits with the three. He has to leave a lot someplace anyway. He can hit less back if he can put his opponent up on the bar. He's got a one to play. Alright, so uh, play the ace, cover the 10 point with the ace. Covering the 10 point with the ace. Instead of duplicating fives, you're giving him a good six now. I think it's fewer shots though. You think it's fewer shots? Probably one less shot. Yeah, right? two, four, six, eight. Yeah. This way. The other way it's nine, I believe. Yeah. The other way, which is the other way? Where's the yeah. one? Keep going. Keep, going. Keep going. going. I was thinking about this. That's pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly in yeah. standing. But as far as fewer shots goes, this is the fewer shots, isn't it? Nine this way versus nine. No, nine, nine either way. Okay. Stick, do you disagree with uh, John's point? Assuming everything we said is right, I think that's right. <laughs> okay. Any, any other comments? Pick up the dice. Look at it. Clearly right by a lot. Let's move on. And Red is not redoubling yet. He's rolling. What's a tough roll for Red? Decisions in here. Let's give him a entering six. Give him an entering six? I mean, it's not yeah, going to yeah, be right. this roll, but yeah. I know it will. Yeah, but, then, but then it's going to create more decisions later. Oh, I see. We can always start over. Because oh. I think we're at a point you where know what? are going to be. I think we're at a point where I want to do something else in this game anyway. Yeah. I want to show you another way to approach uh, deliberate practice, uh, which uh, is, a, is a good approach for these kinds of games. Uh, and I'm going to go back to. Wrong number. <laughs> you picked one that fanned. You picked one that doesn't. Close, close the program. Pick open window, window for one that doesn't fan. Close. Where's the 10 year old? Close your. Uh, close the open window first. Yeah, yeah. close that one. There, now you can do it every time. Yeah. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go back and show you another way to approach learning from this position. And uh, and we go right back to the beginning of um, position one where we started. And. Here's what I'd like to do, and, and then we'll finish up for the day. Another way to approach, uh, let me make this so you can see it better. Uh, this isn't the original we looked at. No, this is a little different. Just making sure. This is a little different. Options, uh, board configuration, camera lights. I want to go up a little bit so we can see the whole board. Okay, so what, what we're doing here is we gave uh, Red an opening roll of a 5-3. And blue roll double six. And now it's Red's play, and I've listed the rolls, and we're going to still do a challenge. This is a challenge between John and Stick, and since Stick is uh, losing right now, is that correct? What's yep. the score? Yep. Two nothing. Two nothing, nothing to, uh, for John. Very close match. I'm going to let Stick go first and tell me how he would play in three two. We're going to look at all the tough rolls to play from here, and that way we'll really understand what we should be doing from this point. So, Stick, first of all, how would you play a 3 2 from here? Oh, probably just 22 and 10. 22 and 10. You agree or disagree, John? Yeah, I agree with that point. You agree with it? We hit the button. Hit the big button. Hit the big button, the bus bus button. Takes a little bit longer, but so what John is saying is, uh, and Stick are both saying, is they would come up with the 2 and down with the 3. Why not up with the 3 and down with the 2? Usually, when you have a choice of points that you can split to, it's usually a little bit better to split to the less valuable one for the mm -hmm. opponent. And also here, if he points on you, you'll have a reasonable three from the bar and then you can enter with the other number and play 13-10. Whereas if you split to the 21, he points on you and you roll something with a four other than five four, you don't really have a good four. Uh -huh. Very good lesson here. A lot of people, even if they would split, would split with the three and not with the two. And as you can see, they're both right, uh, and for all the reasons John said. 
uh, and why are you splitting it all as opposed to just coming down and playing safe? I, I think 90% of beginners would simply bring a checker down to here and play safe. And in the early game, uh, save, is, save is more dangerous in the long run to play safe. You need to take some chances and set up for more better positions. All right, it's John's turn. You have a 4-1 to play. 41. Okay, I'll play 13-9 uh, and start the uh, five points. 13-9 to start the five points. Nick, do you agree or disagree for challenge? Um, this is John's play. Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll play 20 and 5 instead. Okay, so Stick challenges, and what Stick is saying is he would come up to the 20 point and challenge there and make this play. So we got another challenge here. Anybody from the audience have a strong feeling? Any comments? Julius, what would you do? I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, I like Stick's play. You like Stick's play? Better than John's play. Bad news for you, Julius. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. It's that configuration with a 6, 7, 8. You have to split your checkers early. Uh -huh. And Julie brings more checkers down. down. Julius High is also a very fine teacher and uh, your teaching pro for the U.S. Basketball Federation and uh, on the board. Uh, and he turns out to be right by enough to win the challenge. Now the scores are even. We got us a fight here. The scores are even. Very good. Why is this play better, uh, Stan? John's play. It gets real touchy after the early double sixes. Some of it has to do with the race when you want to move the back checkers. Because we're behind in the race in all these just by how much. Um, so, you know, if they're already behind, usually the less you want to split. Um, again, Don plays not bad. Uh -huh. so it's not a lot to say about it, really. But most of these you still do want to split for the most part, even though you're way behind in the race. Even though you're way behind the race, it isn't horrible that they're making your opponent's five points. Yeah. You saw that earlier. Now, I will say that if red had opened with a 4-2, and then black rolled boxes. I mean, blue rolled sixes. Uh, then you rolled four one. Then I think the fact you'd be making uh, the best possible three point board at first would make thirteen nine six five correct. Okay. But now John is saying. The, let's find out. John's saying if this had been the position, now you would make John's play. I would. You would. You would. It, it actually changes the play since you you started with the four point instead of the three point. Let's find out. And again, you, you also lost two pips in this little situation. Yeah. Like, it's very pip sensitive. And look at this. John is completely right. It changes the play greatly, the difference of the four. And how many of us would have noticed that there's a difference because of these two points? I don't think very many people would see that. I'm not sure I would. Okay, we're going to go back to the original. And now we have stick to play a 6-1. 5-2. 5-2, new challenger. No, I'm sure that's right. You're sure that's right? Yeah. It's just an odd number. Five two, that's all there is? It's yeah. really weird to say. Yeah. Okay. John, you have a 6-2 to play. 62. Okay. Two choices. 13 to 5 or run? Well, John's thinking about sliding the five point or running a checker from the bench. If you run, he shouldn't hit with three one or four two, I don't think. But you are behind the race, so don't race. Speak up a little louder. All right, so you're behind in the race, so don't race is usually good advice. But yeah, I, I think here I, I would follow that. I'll just play 13 5. Okay, he doesn't want to race because he's behind the race. Stick, do you agree? That's right. They both like 13 to 5, yeah. right by quite a bit. Well, also, uh, blue has 10 checkers in the tax zone. So that's another reason for doing Julius is pointing out that there's 10 checkers in the zone, in the attack zone, and you don't really want to be attacked by leaving a lone checker, although I'm not sure if you'd be attacked on the one point anyway, but it's another factor involved. Okay, so now we have a stick to play a 6-3. Same thing, the four point. Same thing. John, you agree or disagree? Um, it'll be closer. <laughs> Stick is saying you run to the four point. It'll be a lot closer. No, I think that's wrong, actually. I, 
Yeah. Jeff thinks it's I, I wrong. Hear you're supposed to run. He challenges and says you're supposed to run. I think there'll be no points. Any comments first? <laughs> Anybody want to <laughs> stick your neck out? It's, it's, yeah. within, it's within point oh two. That's the I don't think it's within point oh two. I think John's right. Really? Yeah. No, it doesn't swing that far. I think it is that far. I could be wrong. And, uh, it's happened before. Yeah, oh, no, too far. Ah, oh. And stick is right. <laughs> It is not between point oh two. Yeah, give me a plus plus. It's so sticking for two yeah. points, and he goes up in the uh, he goes up in the contest now. Give me, give me a plus plus. I think it'll get closer. You want a oh, plus yeah. plus? Yeah. plus yeah. I, th I think it'll be within point oh two. Yeah, we we settle all of our arguments and bets with plus plus. I, I still think it'll be over point oh two. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. You don't think it'll be better? Yeah. I thought I thought that was that. Yeah, that was smart. smart. I knew it was point oh two. I just don't know the right yeah. point. <laughs> Which is typical of my game. I know that something's wrong. I just don't know what I've done. Oh, yeah. oh no, no, points. no points. No points. It's still a tie. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice call, Ben. Okay. Are you sure you want to six? So, uh, so John has to play a 6 4 now. 6 4. Okay. Well, let's see. 13 to 3 is pretty ugly, so I'll just run. 24 40. He's just going to run, stick? Yep. Because just coming down to 3 is, doesn't really help you much. And it's clearly right by a lot. Uh, now, Pick has to play a double two. I'm usually not smart enough to do anything other than make the 20 point. Stick to say he's not smart enough to do anything but make this point. Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah. 22 and 11 is a terrible look. I'm just going to make. I'm just going to make the 20. I'll take some John, do you disagree? No, I agree. He agreed. They don't like making the 20 point. Ben, you didn't agree? I'll, I'll take 22 and 11. 22 and 11? Do you like coming up with two and down with two? 22 and 4. Uh, and Julius likes the 20, 22 point and the 4 point, making the inside point. we got we got four opinions on this play, three opinions on this play. Let's see what's right. we got to come up. I know that part. And the Giants are both right on this play. Why are the other plays worse? Why is this play right? Well, you're not that far down in the race. You're down eight pips. And uh, even if uh, Blue you know, gets the 18-point uh, checkers home safely, you'll still have a very playable 20-point game. You can never be primed. So you can never be primed. You won't get gammoned from the five-point very well, often. You're not get and you still get the race. 22. Yeah. Yeah. So you're only down eight pips in the race after the roll. And uh, just because your opponent rolled level six, don't you don't totally give up on the race. It's part of the lesson that Jen's saying here. Okay, we have uh, one more, and it's uh, uh, John's five three to play. Five three. This looks pretty clear. Twenty uh, four twenty one thirteen eight. Yep. Coming splitting with the three, and coming down with the five, and stick agrees, and it's clearly right. We have a tie. And I don't have a tiebreaker. You're both getting white castles, and you're both getting a copy of the book Backgammon for Losers. Uh, and uh, thank you and thank you all for attending and uh, for coming to the Ohio Open. And uh, good luck in, uh, to all of you, and thank you, John, and Stick, for your uh, great advice in this. Thank you. Bye bye. Did you already get one of these books? No. It's a fun book. Give one of your students too. Thank you, sir. Thank you.